welcome back. I've got a really fun experiment for you today, and one that goes under the rather unusual name of Raker's Tube. Now, I know I say that all experiments are fun, and that they're nearly all my favourite experiments, but this one really is brilliant. Uh, I saw it when I was a kid many, many years ago in a school lecture, and it sort of goes to prove that um, if you go and visit uh, lectures by professional scientists who do outreach, it has an effect upon you, and I've remembered it ever since. And it's a really ex simple experiment. It only uses two pieces of apparatus. A tube, so this is a, a large tube for the video, a scaffolding tube and um, a lit Bunsen burner. So let's see what we can do with those two. So just before I demonstrate this apparatus, a little bit of background. The effect I'm going to demonstrate was noticed by glass blowers and they've noticed it for hundreds of years when blowing glass bottles and things that are sort of tube shaped. And it wasn't until about 1859 at Leiden University, a place very famous for its science, some of you might have heard of the Leiden jar capacitor, that Professor Riker in about 1859 was able to demonstrate this effect in a tube and kind of formalise the physics behind it. So what we'll do now is we'll get the apparatus working and I'll show you what happens. OK, here we go. Let's light up the Bunsen. There we go, a hot Bunsen flame. Let's get the tube put it over the Bunsen and this takes a moment or so and then the fun bit comes when you just move it to the side now that's really unusual let's try it again and we'll also try some other experiments too Now that's rather unusual. The note stops when you turn it horizontally. So let's see if I can explain this. Well, it's a very easy device, but the explanation is very, very tricky. So we can start off by saying that this is something known as a thermoacoustic device. And that's something that uses heat to turn into sound energy. And so the heating of the pipe causes a sound wave to build up inside it. But first what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you how it's constructed because there's more to it than meets the eye. Let's have a closer look at the apparatus. I've made a glass model so you can see what's going on. So the scaffolding tube was open at both ends. But what you didn't see was a piece of laboratory gauze wedged in the tube about a quarter of the way up. And it's this that's key to why it makes sound. The next thing we did was we put the tube over the Bunsen burner and I heated up the gauze and got the gauze red hot. That of course causes a convection current to build up in the tube. The hot gases here around the uh, piece of gauze expand and become less dense and rise up the tube. But there's something strange that happened. That there'll be a convection current whilst the Bunsen's underneath the tube, but we didn't get any note. We only got the note when we took it away from the Bunsen, and that explanation is a little bit more tricky. Here goes for the final bit of the explanation, and I hope I get it right. So we've got a hot piece of gauze away from the Bunsen, and we have a convection current in the tube, but we have one other thing too. The air around the hot gauze will get heated and expand, and if it expands it goes up and down in the tube, leaving a low pressure where the gauze is. To equalise that pressure, air will then rush back in, and of course hot air comes back into the hot gauze and doesn't gain any heat energy, but cold air will come in from underneath and gain heat energy, and it's that sudden pressure change that shakes the air in the tube and builds up the vibration. It gives it a kick every cycle, and we get a standing wave forming in the tube for as long as the gauze remains hot. Now, you're gonna to have to forgive me for not showing you one experiment uh, because it's a bit tricky to film in the lab on my own, but I have actually seen this done. Plays a note, you turn it horizontally and then run with it. And if you run with it, you force air through the tube and it actually will play the note again for as long as the gauze is warm. Now, where my explanation falls down a tiny bit 
is when we hold it vertically away from the Bunsen and it's warm, it plays a note, and when we turn it through 90 degrees, it doesn't play a note at all. There's no convection happening now because the hot air can't rise, but it still can expand where the gauze is and contract. But it can't leave the tube. So in fact, warm air is expanding and contracting quite close to the gauze. And I think that's the reason that we are not sucking in cold air. We need to get rid of as much hot air as possible. We need to get rid of it by allowing it to convect. And when we turn it through that angle, we don't get the convection, so it doesn't encourage the oscillation. Anyway, tricky explanation, possibly right, but a great fun experiment nonetheless. So, that's Riker's tube, Rika's tube, um, we used to call it Ricky's tube. I really hope you enjoyed that, it's a great fun and unusual experiment and I look forward to seeing you again next time. <laughs>